In this video, we are going to discuss changes of motor control in patients with sacroiliac pain. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. In recent videos, we've talked about changes in motor control due to pain. In low back pain, there seem to be two distinct phenotypes at both ends of the spectrum. A tight control pattern with excessive co-contraction and a loose control type with muscle inhibition. Could it be that the same types are found within a population with pelvic girdle pain? The current literature reports that somewhere between 10 to 30 percent of all low back pain is attributed to the sacroiliac joints. Much attention has been paid to reduced force closure resulting from insufficient muscle activity and ligament flexity. However, it is also suggested that for some patients, excessive activation of the motor control system may result in excessive force closure. It is known that certain patients demonstrate sacroiliac pain associated with increased pelvic floor activation, while others demonstrate reduced activity neither too little nor too much SI joint stability from either mechanical stiffness properties or force closure and compression is optimal. O'Sullivan et al. from the year 2007 have written a masterclass on this topic. They reason that similar to nonspecific low back pain, nonspecific pelvic girdle pain disorders may be represented by a number of subgroups with different underlying pain mechanisms as well. Next to one group of centrally mediated pelvic pain, they distinguish two predominantly peripherally mediated groups. A group with reduced force closure and a group with excessive force closure, resulting in abnormal stresses on pain sensitive structures in the pelvis. Let's look at the reduced force closure group first. This group is characterized by disorders in which the peripheral pain drive is associated with excessive strain to sensitize this eye joint and or surrounding connective tissue and myofascial structures, secondary to ligamentous laxity coupled with motor control deficits of muscles that control force closure. Oftentimes, hormonal influences on collagen synthesis may be an important factor in this group and commonly present postpartum. When performing an active straight leg raise test, they will often report with a positive result that is normalized with pelvic compression. The motor control deficits in this group are linked to a loss of co-contraction in muscles such as the pelvic floor, transverse abdominis, lumbar multifidi, iliopsoas, and gluteal muscles, and others that are responsible for force closure of the SI joints. These patients experience functional impairments and pain in weight-bearing postures such as sitting, standing, or walking or loaded activities inducing rotational pelvic strain associated with coupled spine hip loading activities such as cycling or rowing. An SI belt may relieve symptoms. The management goal in these patients is to enhance force closure by stabilization exercise programs of all muscles that act on the SI joint. Evidence, for example, Stuge et al. in the year 2004 showed that a stabilization approach is effective in this category with a 50% reduction in disability, a 30 mm reduction on the fast scale for pain and improvements in quality of life after one year compared to a more general physiotherapy program. Now let's look at the subgroup with excessive force closure. This group is defined by a pelvic girdle pain in which the peripheral nociceptive driver is based on excessive, abnormal and sustained loading of sensitized pelvic structures from excessive activation of the motor system local to the pelvis. These patients often present with localized pain to the SI joint with sensitive surrounding structures such as the pelvic floor and piriformis muscle. On the active straight leg raise test, they will often test negative and even have increased pain when the SI joint is stabilized. Furthermore, pain is usually aggravated with activation of the muscles that are responsible for force closure, and these patients take on postures with a lordotic curve associated with high co-contraction. This co-contraction is often a result of false illness beliefs that the pelvis is displaced or unstable. Obviously, the management for these patients should be different. 
core stabilization exercises should be stopped and this group generally benefits from cardiovascular exercise, relaxation and the assumption of passive spinal postures. Unfortunately, no robust evidence is available for such a treatment approach and evidence is only anecdotal yet. So next time when you have a patient in front of you and you suspect that they have low back pain due to a painful sacroiliac joint, you should try to figure out if a reduced force closure or an excessive force closure might be the peripheral driver of their condition. Always keep in mind that pain is always multifactorial, so psychosocial factors and centrally mediated factors might very well play a role in your patient as well. If you would like to get some inspiration on how to treat patients from each of these categories, have a look at our playlist on sacroiliac joint pain. This video and so much more can be found in our newly released online course on physiotherapy of the spine on our website study.physiotutors.com. As always, thanks a lot for watching, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Bye.